Warning. The following program contains gripes, frustrations, and unfiltered real talk about the current state of the Amazon ads industry. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome back, everyone, to that Amazon ads podcast, where today things are going to be a little bit different. We're not so much talking about PPC strategy, how to improve your Amazon ads, as much as we are taking an opportunity to just vocalize some frustration that we have had in the space. And this episode is not going to be for everybody. So if you're here only for the education, skip this episode, not for you. But this, we do think complaining while there's, there's not, you know, some people can complain too much and it's kind of annoying and just being negative all the time. There is sometimes a time and a place to complain in a healthy way to, yeah, I think it's healthy to express some frustration to, to, ha to use that outlet. And I think it can also be helpful for others who might be experiencing very similar frustrations to realize they're not alone. It can be very comforting when, you know, I think that one of the examples we were, we were talking about before we hit record is like when you're extremely mistreated by someone and you want to like look over your shoulder to be like, is anyone else saying this? Like, is it just me or, or am I right? And then if someone else is like, yeah, dude, that was messed up. It's kind of comforting to know that you're not going crazy. It's not just you, that there are a lot of things in the world that are broken. And Andrew, we are going to be kind of talking about how we're trying to help fix some of these things. Um, yep. But yeah, what 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 are you uh, thinking right now in terms of everything? Yeah, yeah. I just want to clarify, this is an episode for us to vent a little bit, give you kind of a state of the union, a state of the industry and what we're seeing kind of from a bird's eye view, having been in this industry for a long time and just some stuff that we're kind of sick of and that we want to see change. And so part of us sharing some of these frustrations is to be a voice for change. And I think we're doing that. And all the things that we're going to talk about, we're not just complaining about them. We are providing solutions and our and our vision of what we think would be a better solution for all these different areas that we're going to talk about. So we're not just complaining and, and bashing people. It's like we're also doing something about it and trying to be the change that we want to see in the Amazon PPC True. industry. True. Yeah. And one other thing I'll say is we are far from perfect. It, by no means do Andrew or I think that there's no reason for anybody to, to, to not have things to complain about us. So the comment section of this video is your safe space. You can tell us what, what you're frustrated about in the Amazon space. It could be frustrated at even at Amazon. It could be frustrated at us. You will not offend us. We've got thick skin. So if you if, if you want to complain about the way in which we're doing content or complain about this episode itself, we'll take all the constructive criticism and feedback that we can get. So take advantage of that comment space to just let it all out when we'll all go and support each other and like each other's comments. Um, but what we are going to be talking about specifically for this episode are three things uh, that we have some gripes with. We have gripes with the current content, educational content and, and existing materials available for people to learn. We have gripes with software available in the Amazon space. And we also have gripes with Amazon advertising managers, whether that's agencies, freelancers, we're mostly talking about agencies. So we're gonna dive in and talk about those three things. Let's go. All right, so number one is content and the influencer culture that is around content. Ever since social media came out, everybody's been putting out educational content about, you name it, Amazon PPC being one of those things. Now, the problem is, is that there's a ton of content out there, endless supply. The problem is that there's not a lot of quality in that supply. And this is not to like knock the influencers or anything for putting out bad stuff or anything like that. It's more so like we as a, as a community, as a industry need to be educated enough ourselves in order to be able to, to sniff out any of the bad information, bad advice that's being put out there. And I see it all the time. I message Steven probably once a week with a video or a, a, a post or something that's just putting out information that's either completely wrong or just like not really helpful, or it's just like too surface level. It's not actually getting into like what's actually going to teach people how to do this more successfully. It's just like brushing over a topic, giving some kind of like blanket statements, like re regurgitated lines. You get um, these influencers who, who are great marketers. And so they come up with these like taglines, these little headlines of the of almost like advice for how they should do things. Like for example, never negate a good keyword. That's like something that you hear in the space often. 
I can think of like three reasons why I would want to negate a good keyword in an auto campaign or something like that, like just right off the bat. So it's like you get a lot of this type of like generic information that's like designed to just hook your attention and like, you know, get your attention and all that type of stuff. So I see a lot of that and it's like super annoying, really frustrating when like, I just know there's so much more depth to the content. There's so much more depth and nuance to the space and to the conversations that are happening specifically around PPC and advertising. It's just way too service level and too blanket statement for me. Yeah, I, I think the best way to describe it would be not helpful at best and perhaps even hurtful at worst. That a lot of information out there just doesn't actually give you some actionable insights to like take and run with. Or other times it could just be frankly bad advice. And I, I am shocked that a lot of times I see just bad math, like things that aren't, it's not even a matter of negating keywords from source campaigns if you're harvesting. Like it's not even like, a, okay, we have varying opinions. Like I really feel strongly that that's wrong, but, but maybe it could be right. It's not even that. It's just like straight up like the math is wrong. And what frustrates me, and, and the reason why Andrew and I share these posts back and forth for, as we're venting our frustration with each other, is not so much just that the content exists. We're not upset about that. What upsets us is we see remarkable engagement and praise and accolades going to these people on their posts and they're sending them virally. And these people just, they get so much praise and adoration. And it's not that Andrew and I are, are jealous and like, oh, we, won't, we wish we had more attention or whatever. But it's frustrating when like some of these posts, it seems like they spend 20 seconds on it, you know, throwing it together or even had like some some VA or an AI like write the post for them. And like our post, the one that I, that I just did yesterday on LinkedIn literally took me an hour to write. And and my posts, like the ones that do do well, they will take me minimum one hour to write as I write, like format, proofread, reread, post, re-edit after I post. And sometimes those, those the, I put a ton of effort into something that I hope will be truly valuable and help a ton of people. And then it just gets overlooked. And I, and I even try to write it in a way that hopefully is like engaging as well and interesting to read and not just boring. So I'm trying to provide all that, but like that doesn't work, but some like overly generic advice that doesn't help anybody goes, goes crazy. And, and that is frustrating to us. And, and that is actually why we made this podcast because a year ago, uh, 13, 14 months ago, Andrew and I were looking at all of the other like podcasts and just realizing this, this content does not help anybody, but people love it. People praise it. And we just wanted to do something that we actually thought would be helpful. And so for us, it can be discouraging at times to not really feel like we're getting the growth that we were anticipating um, when we feel like we're we're really trying to create a lot of value. And that's just our gripe. Andrew, anything to add to this section or should we move on to the next one? Nope, let's keep going. All right, let's talk about software. All right, when it comes to Amazon, software, specifically Amazon advertising software. There's a lot that we can say, but I want to take a step back and point out something that I'm not sure if anyone else has noticed this, but after I point it out to you, you will start to notice it, that it seems like software everywhere has really been degrading in terms of the quality of what is put out there. And like, and I'm talking Apple, Microsoft, like all the incumbents, the, these big tech companies, I'm just seeing things break all the time. Like even and and this has been a trend that really accelerated since 2020, and we have some suspicions for why it might be since 2020 that suddenly like the the service industry essentially became significantly worse. But you, you see it largely with with software, just more bugs, more issues, and all these things. Just the other day, like and it seems like the developers create updates that make everything worse. And I'm like, frankly, it'd be better if you just stopped working like like don't do anything it seems like you're intentionally same. trying to make things worse <laughs> here's the point when it comes to amazon though a lot of the big companies the big the big name big brand tech companies we don't need to name them because you know who they are a lot of them at least three of them are billion dollar valuation companies with several hundred employees on their teams limited com competition relatively it's like there's only like three of them that are that size and that scale and they charge, they're able to charge a lot and still have buggy, slow platforms that are not super intuitive to people who are like used to living in the ad console because these weren't built by people living in the ad console. And they hired too fast because they're focused on quick growth. And, you know, it, it ends up because they don't have a ton of competition, 
they just don't need to try that hard because they are stable. They have, you know, several hundreds of millions of dollars worth of like seed rounds and backing and venture capitalists and everyone there is making a ton of money. And we just don't think those tools are that great. We, we, for, for a lot of reasons, like we, if you've listened to our podcast at all, you, you would know. Um, but that's why we, we created ad labs even was, is primarily because we needed something that we could use that actually helped us get the job done that we also hope would be helpful for everybody else. But yeah, that brings up such a good point too, because the developers that are building and creating these software tools, they're not Amazon PPC managers. And that's probably why there's such a big discrepancy between people like us who are actually in platform using these tools to actually do stuff for our accounts and for our clients every single day versus them who are just developers and they build tools and they know code. They're coders. They're not Amazon PPC managers. So they build these tools, they build these systems, they build bidding algorithms and all that type of stuff from their own understanding, not from uh, the standpoint and perspective of an actual hands-on keyboard executor. And so they build stuff that's not actually what somebody would want. And so in terms of software and just when I think about like, you know, in business in general, just like having a competitive advantage in something, I think that with ad labs, like what gives me so much hope and what gives me so much confidence in our ability to execute and build this into something massive. And that really helps a lot of people in the space is that we have deep domain expertise in the thing that we're building. And we have a, you know, a combined over a decade of experience doing the thing that we're building a solution to solve for. And so we're very close into to what the end user and the end customer actually gets. And so um, that's the biggest discrepancy between like a big software company versus like what we're doing at Ad Labs is um, we're building it for the end user and we are the end user. And so um, we're able to test and iterate and build product and build products within the app that are useful and that people actually get a lot of value from. Yep. And the other thing and the perhaps the biggest differentiator, I think, um, between working with small companies such as Ad Labs versus big companies is there there's a there's a level of personal ownership that small teams have with what they're building and that brings a, a large degree of quality and passion to their work and and really what they're working on becomes a labor of love and that's very much how we feel about everything that we're doing is it's a labor of love but they're billion dollar companies so that's the 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 most what's on their mind is how not how can they clean up the experience for all the amazon advertisers their job is like how can we tap into tiktok so we can make more money how can we tap into walmart target all these other things like they just want to continue growing horizontally so that they can maximize as as much money from as many verticals as they can rather than just focusing on one thing and doing extremely well i mean everything that we see in our industry it's b plus at best and it's really frustrating to us because it's just like where has the passion gone with doing a plus work and and that's what we're trying to bring and that's what we're trying to revitalize so uh that's that's my stuff yep one more thought on software kind of goes hand in hand with what we talked about before and just like the celebration of stuff that that isn't even that good um there's a bunch of like small amazon ppc softwares popping up all over the place and things like that you get a lot of that and we use these and you tested them and, and they start, you start seeing these companies like get awards and stuff like that from Amazon and like all these partner awards and things like that. And then you're oh using the tool and you're like, wait, what? Like how, like this is terrible. Like this is horrible UX, horrible UI. You know, you, uh, for example, like one we were t looking at and testing out for day parting, like wouldn't even, doesn't change the bids. It just pauses your campaigns during the day. And like, you know, just stuff like that where, if and, you... and and it also it only pauses your campaigns, but it suddenly yeah. doesn't work if you have multiple ad groups in one campaign. Then it can't pause the campaign. It can only pause campaigns with one ad group. I'm like, dude, who who thought to do like where does this come from? Like, it, yeah. it's clearly not designed by someone who's in the ad console every single day and talking and doing like five client reporting calls a week, talking to clients all the time. Like, anyway, sorry, I, I interrupted. Keep going. No, you're good. But it's frustrating because I use these tools and I see them like getting awards and like so much praise and celebration. Oh, like such good work on your tool and all this type of stuff. And then we've got Ad Labs, who is, which is just objectively better by a landslide, uh, both in terms of UX, UI, functionality, results, all this type of stuff. 
and people won't even like try it or test it out or anything like that. Like you could literally just pull up two screens and look at the two and just be like, which one's better? And you could you can make a pretty uh, safe bet there. So I'm just, just kind of frustrated with that, it's, you know, whatever, but it's uh, super annoying whenever you see crap tools getting put on a pedestal. And I also know that it probably sounds like we're always trying to pitch ad labs and I want to make it explicitly clear that yes, we, we are. are just kidding. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Uh, what I want to say is, exp is explicitly make explicitly clear is that we are trying to be genuinely helpful to people. And we only ever talk about tools and like we only ever sell tools or recommend tools that we personally use that have made our lives better. And also there's a, there's a lot of other tools out there that have podcasts where like they made the tool first and they're like, oh, podcast would be a great way to market the tool. That was not us. We had the podcast first before we ever had the idea for the tool. We started the podcast in May of 2023, uh, June, basically. I mean, end of May, beginning of June. And then the idea just popped into my head in, in July of 2023. And now it's July, 2024. So it's been now a full year, but we didn't you know really start the tool right away. So so yeah, the tool still has some limitations and in terms, like it takes time to build this thing. It's been less than a year that we've been building it. So the whole idea for this podcast episode topic came out of a LinkedIn post that I did yesterday in which I was just expressing my frustration because I know a lot of other people have felt it too, that they're just not getting, a lot of clients have just not gotten very good performance or attention from these large reputable agencies. And they're just like, where do I go? How do I, and they go from one agency to the other and there's churn, churn, churn. They can just never find that same like uh, labor of love, quality and passion in the work. And to me, I've been really trying to help several of these large name brand agencies to get better performance for their clients. And to me, it's, it, it is mind blowing that they won't give me the time of day. I'm offering free training and consulting, which historically, I mean, other smaller agencies that do still have that passion have paid me uh, 500 to a thousand dollars per training session, which will last like 60 to 90 minutes. Like, so that's typically like what we're charging to train teams on a lot of strategies and, and doing consulting stuff like that. And I'm offering that for free to other agencies because I'm trying to help them. Some boast, oh, we do it manual in the console, old school. And I'm like, you're not doing as much as you can or they're fully automating. And I'm just, I'm trying to teach them, trying to help them, but it won't give me the time of day. Andrew, why do you think that is? Why, why do you think this situation even exists? I think this situation exists due to a couple things. Number one, just commitment consistency bias, like the natural inclination to continue to stick with what's worked that has gotten you to this point. And so I'm, I'm sure that a lot of these agency owners have gotten to a certain point of success with the current method, the current way they do things. And they're thinking, well, it's gotten me this far and it's working and it's continued to work. And so why would I change anything? And so you're dealing with this, like, you know, this dynamic where it's like, they've got a lot riding on the current system that they have set up. And so um, it's, it's a lack of adaptation to the circumstances. And um, you know, these agencies, they have a lot of churn. They've, a lot more churn than we do for sure. Um, and you know, for us, like in the last 12 months, like we, we talked about before, we did 12 audits, 12 closes, hundred percent close rate. Um, these other agencies, they're, you know, they're closing like 200 deals in uh, a year. Well, well but, that was, that was what one, one other agency had commented to us that would, was, they were like, mm. they were, they were making fun of us. So like a hundred percent close rate sounds impressive, but it was only 12 audits. We closed 200 accounts with only a 30% close rate. But like, they were saying they'd rather have 200 than 12. Sure, sure. And and certainly that is a, a case to be made for that. Like you can make way more if you're, you know, scaling and all that type of stuff. But for us, like it's just a matter of priorities in terms of like what we're actually after. And our goal is not to be like the richest person uh, in the world or anything like that. Uh, we're trying to deliver good quality results for all the clients that we work with. Like I don't, I can't sleep at night if I know that there's a client that's being neglected within our, our service. Um, if there is a client that's not performing or that is unhappy or that is, you know, not having a good experience overall, I can't live with myself knowing that. And it seems like a lot of these influencer owners, CEOs, whatever, they, they built their, their foundation and their success off of their knowledge. You can either be a fast growth agency or you can be a slow growth agency. And uh, depending on which one you go with, you're going to have very different priorities. And just these fast growth agencies, man, they just, they just don't have the commitment to quality 
And the reason why they can get away with that is because they're they're so well positioned in terms of like their lead generation. They have that, that system that's basically set up that's bringing in new leads on a consistent basis. And so they don't have to worry if like, as long as their churn rate is at a certain percentage, they can continue to grow and they can continue to scale. And so- well, And that's what I was gonna say is maybe they need to be closing. So, so right. 200, 200 closes over the course of a year, that's an average of 15, 16, 17, new accounts per month that's being onboarded, which is extreme growth, but maybe they need to do that because the churn is also so bad. It's just like a revolving door at that agency um, <laughs> that like they're, maybe they're losing five clients a month or 10 clients a month. So like they're net, like for us, like 12 closes in 12 months was 12 net new accounts with like virtually no accounts lost. I think like we did lose like one or two accounts in the last couple of years or sorry, in the, mm -hmm. in the last year but also they were not due to performance they were they were due to like uh, like and i and i've i don't know if i've ever said this before but i've never in my life and i think Andrew's the same we have never ever ever lost a client due to performance there have been other things that are outside of our control or, or like they're running into a situation that like we've taken advertising as far as it, as far as it can go and they need this is a, my scenario at least with a, with a mm -hmm. company that that parted ways with, with me yesterday or sorry, uh, last week, two weeks ago, last month, last month. Um, but basically like they were in this really weird, unique situation in which like they were being completely beat out by Chinese third party sellers and they could not like advertise and could not fix it. Like I, I improved their advertising a lot, but there were ultimately a lot of other issues that I couldn't help with. They needed a nut, someone else who could help these other things. And the other person said that like they won't do it unless they can also take advertising. So the client was super apologetic to me, wrote me a very kind note. Uh, I could probably throw up the email that I received. If it's not appropriate or if it's not inappropriate to share it, you'll see it right here. And if I decided later afterwards that I'm not going to share that, then it won't be there. So, uh, <laughs> but but point being, like even when we lose, even when we have churn, it's not due to performance. But when people come to us, Andrew, asking for audits, they're saying. Oh yeah, I was with this agency or that agency. Dude, it was such a bad experience, man. Like I was like, like my performance was bad. They couldn't fix anything. I was never getting any attention. And we hear this from like, there's probably top three, four, five agency names out there, and we've received clients from them all, um, because, and this is just in the past like, twelve months is what we're looking at. But like we've been doing this for five years too. So, like over the past five years, we we've heard quite a bit of information about people churning from different agencies and. And there are a couple of names that keep coming up <laughs> repeatedly. <laughs> now, granted, it could just be that they're large agencies and so they have a lot of clients in general. You probably won't hear of someone churning from Ad Labs because there's only 12 people currently at Ad Labs, <laughs> uh, clients at Ad Labs. So it'll, it'll be a little bit, uh, it's a small, small chance that you would even run into them. So it could just be that. It could just be that there's a large audience that they've had and they have this big revolving door of, 200 clients a year anyways. I don't I don't think we can say that though once we've looked under the hood a little bit. It's like, okay, I, I kind of well, understand that's the other thing. Yeah, when we do our <laughs> audits, when we do our audits, we're looking at the history and and I it's like, dude, no one's been touching this like no one's been optimizing bids for the past 12 months on this. There've been no bid changes. No bid changes. And like I've the structure it, is crap. For sure. Like all the the strategy's awful. It's it's just like, really? And they were charging you how much? Right. Right. Yeah, and I mean, all right we've complained about these agencies a lot. Let's, let's just real quickly talk about what we're doing and how we're doing it differently with ad labs, because I think it's super important that we're sharing how we're doing it, doing it differently. True. Number one, we're just not trying to scale super fast and make a ton of money. So that's not our, our prerogative. Our prerogative is commitment to quality and over speed and profits. So we're trying to go slow and build something that is sustainable over a long term. We're trying to build something big. And whenever you have a vision for something big, your timeline and your time horizon for how big you want that to get need to be in correlation, need to be correlated with one another and, and in alignment with one another. So um, we're really trying to stay committed to quality with every client that we work with, with every ad manager that we hire, with every um, new employee, we're gonna be vetting them. They're gonna be the best. Like our goal is to be the best agency, the best uh, software, the best Amazon PPC influencers out there. And so, you know, that's what we're committed to. We actually care about getting results for people. We can't stand if clients come to us and they work with us for a month and they haven't seen a tangible result in what we've been able to activate and go again and uh, do in their account. So 
you know, those are a couple things. Um, and, and with that, you know, that has forced us to kind of be okay with lower margins because we have to, you know, when it comes to quality and hiring quality people, quality people cost more. And so we are willing to pay out a little bit more because we want that quality for our clients. And so everybody that our clients work with is going to be a vetted ad manager that's stateside, you know, works on your time zone, is able to speak your language in a, a fluent way and um, really personable and, you know, just like who you would want to work with on a, on a regular basis. And so I think having the experience for both of us in, in the agency as well as software side of things. Like I, I, last agency I worked at scaled and sold for several million dollars. And, you know, we've seen all of that and seen the bad side of things, the good side of things. And within what we're doing with ad labs, within the content, within the software, within the agencies, all of it um, is with the goal of it is to just deliver maximum quality for, for each of the people that come into our funnel, into our uh, programs and into our products. Yeah. I mean, the bottom line is, yeah, 12 audits, 12 months. It's not very much. It certainly could be could be better, but we also haven't really been trying. We're just now starting to try <laughs> a little bit more, and within two, and, the uh, last two months, right? Like we we just started kind of pitching it, and I'm making yeah, an offer. Yeah, that's actually for, true. That's actually true. Most yeah. of those that's actually true. <laughs> Most of those closes were in the last two months. I don't even know why we say that. Why why we even say twelve months? There were like three <laughs> or four in the whole twelve months, and then like the other eight were in like the last couple of months. But we are, I think, slow. Yeah, slow growth is the best way to describe it. I don't really think any individual manager can possibly take on more than one or two new accounts in a single month. There's just like yep. way too much stuff that goes on in month one that, in fact, one client that came to us, they said like, he joined this guy uh, from one of these agencies, like, you know, was his account manager and the account manager was brand new, new hire. And that account manager was showing his screen and accidentally showed that like there were 10 accounts that like he was kicking off and starting off that whole month. And this guy just left. He was like, nope. <laughs> he's like, if this dude is like, this is his first day in the job and he's trying to onboard 10 new accounts at once, he's like, I'm out. And I do not blame him. Not at all. Point being, to, to thank you guys for, if you made it through, thank you for just letting us uh, let out our, vent our frustration. Hopefully you resonated with, with some of it. If you disagree with everything we said, leave comments below, complain back at us. But it's it's not it's not only our industry, by the way. I mean, I, the other example we were talking, Andrew and I were talking about, is like you you go to like a coffee shop, and the barista rolls their eyes at you when you order a black coffee, and then they and then they're expecting like a thirty percent tip afterwards. And I was like, <laughs> that's when I'm looking over my shoulder. I'm just like, dude, is am I going crazy? Like, am I the only one who thinks this type of service is not okay, or like? Yeah, it's just so. a sense of entitlement, man. Everybody's coming out thinking they deserve everything and uh, not willing to actually like put in the the back end work that to support w what actually gives you that deserve it factor. I I think that's I think that's what it is. I think a lot of these other like agencies and softwares and and uh, even content creators they say that like their attitude is like, dude, you are so lucky that you get to work with us or that, or that we're giving you this content or that, or that you can access our software or, that, or whatever. Where at least our opinion or our attitude that we try to keep, and I'll be, we don't do it perfectly, right? Like humility is, is something that requires working on, but we feel so lucky and blessed when we get to work with you guys. Like the fact that we even recently broke a thousand subscribers on YouTube to us just feels awesome. Like we're so excited. We feel so lucky and fortunate and, and we're grateful for all of you guys and and for anyone who decides to, to partner with us or or, or and it, it requires some if you're going to use like the software it does require some effort on your part because it's not it's not supposed to be like a you know throw your brain out the window and just like go on autopilot because we believe that you can exercise a little bit more brain power to get really good performance that like human plus machine can get the best result and that's so it requires some thinking and if you're willing to like put a little bit of time in or jump on a call with me or watch any of my videos when I'm trying to teach this stuff, like you can get really good performance. And I, and, but if you, if you go through that work and you start getting those results, I'm, I'm over the moon excited with, with hearing about the, the feedback and the results that, that people do get. And especially when you're able to get that for your clients and your clients are stoked and then you're stoked and then I'm stoked and then everybody's stoked. It's a good time. And that's why we do it.
Couldn't have said it better myself, man. All right, let's put a stamp on this episode. Thank you, everybody, for watching another episode of the Adam is on Ice podcast. See you again next week. Peace out. <laughs>